I want to talk about due diligence. What is due diligence? It's a term used in economics and in the financial world. Nevertheless, this is something that you can apply to everything in daily life. For example, let's say that you are, let's say you are the owner of a small restaurant and you want to hire a manager to manage it for you. Now you put on the vacancy out there or you hire a recruiter, whatever you do. Eventually, you have to decide who you pick. If a recruiter does it, he will present some potential employees to you. You need to pick. Once you pick someone and after the contract, you are not responsible for your decision. Now, of course, the employee also has responsibility for how he behaves. If you hire someone and they intentionally mess up, then you just fire them. That is not on you. You did the right thing. But if you hire someone that's questionable and later things go wrong or later there's a controversy, people will blame you. For example, if a guy has ties to the, let's say the triads or to some satanic cult or to some, type, some violent gang nearby and you hire him, the thing is, he has ties to the dark side. So the dark side will haunt him wherever he is. And that will also affect your customers. And if later people find out that the manager of a restaurant is involved with some deep criminal network, people will avoid that restaurant. And people are also going to think, hmm, the owner of that restaurant, he must be involved too. I mean, if you hire someone, you want to check where you're hiring, right? Whether they have a criminal record or whatever. People are going to blame you. So due diligence is, re is relevant. The people you get involved with, with it will affect you. But there's another thing. The people you get involved with also affect other people you are connected to. So doing due diligence simply means you want to figure out what you're dealing with. Not just who you're dealing with. Because the who can change. Someone may have a criminal record, but they're not a criminal anymore. That is behind them. Someone may not have a criminal record, but they may be a time bomb ready to go off because they're narcissistic. So it's not just who. The social status of someone you need to figure out. You need to find out what it is you're dealing with. And this is something quite interesting about human communities. Fallen mankind often does not want to do due diligence because due diligence requires transparency and self-reflection. Due diligence goes both ways, both towards yourself and towards others. Now, what happens when you end up involved with people that you've never been involved with. What will happen is that the people around are going to notice that there's something wrong with you. I'm not saying that you're a bad individual, or a bad person. Maybe people see you're not a bad person, but they see that you lack some type of intelligence or you lack people around you to support you. For example, let's say you one day realize that you're part of a cult or you're part of a money laundering scheme. And now you realize, oh dear, how do I get out of this? How did you end up there? Because somewhere you lacked due diligence. Now, that doesn't have to be your fault. It can be that you were not raised properly to exercise due diligence. And it also can be neglect on your part that you just uh, wanted the easy way out. Or you took something that was too good to be true because you just wanted to escape. That can also be the case. Now, if it's a second thing you just repent if it's the first thing you need to process that there was some lack inside of you and that can be painful to face especially because it involves other people that you consider important to you i'm not saying that people who are neglectful don't have a hard time facing themselves they do but this is something they had a direct influence upon instead of something 
that happened to them that they couldn't control and now it affects them. Understand this. In daily life, you need due diligence. Not only are you dealing with other people. For example, let's say you want to purchase a washing machine. And you see this washing machine, it has the best quality that you can imagine, but it's only $200. Common washing machines may be $300, $400. So you think to yourself, hold on a minute, how come this extended washing machine, which also has a drying function in it, how come it's only $200? dollars a dryer is around four or four or five hundred dollars a washing machine could be around three hundred dollars so this should be at least around eight nine hundred dollars in that case you need to realize hmm either this is a scam or there's something wrong with this machine simple as that or what if someone tells you nobody owes you anything and you don't owe anyone else this is what they call free will the doctrine of free will simply means you don't owe anyone else and nobody owes you. You will what you will. People have to find a way to deal with what you will. Nobody has the right to tell you to change your will or to change your attitude or to change your mind. Nobody has a right to infringe on how you think and feel. That's really what it comes down to. Now, hold on. You should have due diligence to examine this, this free will doctrine. Nobody owes you. You don't owe anyone else. Okay. So that means if there's a guy getting drunk behind the stairwell, driving around drunk, that means that he has a right to do that. That means he has a right to endanger everyone on the road. You may have a daughter going out with some friends, and then you pick up the phone, you hear that she died in a car accident because someone was driving drunk. And now you're upset, and now you, you want to charge, uh, press charges, but then the judge tells you, sir, he has free will. He doesn't owe you anything. Neither you owe him something, neither I owe you something. Is that how reality works? Or let's say now that you worked, you have a contract, you work somewhere, and now the employer decides I'm not going to pay you because I'm going to use some money for something else. I don't owe you, you don't owe me. Or let's say now you have, a, you have an heart attack and you're on the ground. So people don't have the obligation, don't owe you to call the ambulance for you. Just let you die. So this free will doctrine is ridiculous. It does add up, it's unstable, and it's undesirable. Nobody in their right mind would endorse this doctrine of free will. Because even as a theory, it's troubling. Even as a theory, as a concept, it's ridiculous. Because it's not stable. Yet there are many believers out there saying free will, free will. Anytime something tragic happens, say, well, God gave free will, so that's why bad things happen and we have to take it. No, 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 no. When Lucifer rebelled in heaven, did God say, hey, Lucifer has a right uh, to revolt against me and to bring trauma to heaven? Did God say that? No. God let that thing play out and all the civil war in heaven um, came to a closure. God kicked out the fallen angels. He did. Did God say, well, they have a right to do that? No, 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 God didn't do that. When Cain killed Abel, did God say, well, you have free will, you have your reasons why you did it? No, God put a curse on Cain. And God didn't want the cycle of violence to multiply, so God says everyone Ooh. who kills Cain will be avenged sevenfold. So... What I'm saying is that this whole idea of free will, I don't owe you, you don't owe me, I will whatever I will, God never talked about it and he never agreed to it. What about the flood of Noah? Did God say the people don't want to change, the people just want to continue in negativity, they have a right to do so, you have to deal with it, Noah? No, God didn't. When it comes to Moses, and freeing the Israelites. Did God tell Moses, Moses, when Pharaoh says no, no means no. No means no. Did God do that? No, he didn't. He made the, uh, the Egyptians comply. 
And when Egyptians resisted, it destroyed them. Simple as that. God wanted to give the land of Canaan to the Israelites. But there were already people living there. Having their houses, their businesses, their family history over there. Those people often said, no, we don't want to leave. What the heck is this? Did they have a choice? No. Look, the Heavenly Father designed us with the ability to choose. But we're not entitled to choose whatever we want. Our ability to choose is there to follow God's will. Our human wills should be in harmony with God's will. That's the way we should function. So we don't have the right to choose whatever we want because we want it and nobody can say anything to us. So as a human being, you should exercise due diligence to the ideas the world is teaching you. Free will is something that even as a concept, it contradicts itself. So when people fall for ridiculous concepts, it shows you one thing. They lack due diligence. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how much scripture you quote. I don't care if you can preach with fire. If you embrace any narcissistic concept and you defend it, it is because you lack due diligence. Somewhere you are lacking. Somewhere you are dysfunctional. Demons can see it and there are people who can see it too. And bad people will take advantage of it. That's why we're told as believers to be renewed in our minds. Now, when it comes to daily life, we have a survival instinct. So when we, when we participate in traffic, when we cross the road, we look around us. When we are in a mall, we know we need to have money or else we, we, we can't uh, live with the uh, groceries. So our survival instincts hinders us from embarrassing ourselves and endangering ourselves and other people. But that's a survival instinct that every one of us has. Have. Every one of, of us have this survival instinct. Even suicidal people have this survival instinct, even though their survival instinct does not work properly. That's why they're suicidal. Nevertheless, even suicidal people are hindered in committing suicide by the survival instincts. Now, this doesn't mean that people never commit suicide. It does happen, but the survival instinct is there. Now, the survival instinct is not due diligence. When you operate out of survival, you operate out of necessity. And because of necessity, you do what's required to survive. That's it. But the thing is, if it's a dangerous situation, you should exercise due diligence afterwards to figure out how can I end up in that situation? What can I do next time? If it wasn't your fault, because it wasn't you, it wasn't you. Because there are other people on the earth too, and some other people do crazy stuff that also affects you as a side effect. So realize that not every bad situation or every bad circumstance is because of you even if you find yourself in it. But what you should do is have an open mind to be educated and to be coached into better. So, okay, it wasn't your fault that that individual exploded in, in the bus where you, were, where you were a pastor in. Now, what you can do is next time before you leave the house, send a piece ahead of you. Pray and send a piece ahead of you. And if you feel uncomfortable taking the bus, you don't take the bus. That's how you prevent adding up in bad situations. Or always leave your house in a good mood. When you leave your house in a good mood, that already is like a shield that hinders tragedies from happening to you. I'm not saying no tragedy can happen around you. But no tragedy can happen to you directly if you use spiritual due diligence. There are even unbelievers will do a similar thing and it works. But of course, unbelievers have no safety working for them. They only have extended relief if they do paganism. But you get what I'm saying. In some countries, for example, Japan, if you were scammed by some company, the first thing the Japanese judge is going to check is whether you did your due diligence. In the West, in many countries in the West, they don't care about that. They just say, hold on a minute, this individual scammed you and took advantage of you. They have no right to do that. They broke the law, so they have to be prosecuted. Simple as that. I'm not saying that in Japan, when 
companies scam you that the Japanese government doesn't prosecute them. It does happen. But, the, but in Japan, the attitude is, hold on. You know that the world is in a fallen state. You know that Japan is not heaven. You grew up here. How can you not realize that some people just want to take advantage of you? That company is a company. They need the money in your pocket to survive. So of course you're going to do whatever they can to get money out of your pocket. That is their interest. Their interest is not you. Their interest in, is in preserving themselves. And the way they preserve themselves is by tricking people to hand over money to them. So of course their primary loyalty is to, get, is to getting money in their pockets. Their primary loyalty is not being concerned with you. So based on that, you should realize that they may lie to you or trick you to get something from you. So you have to be responsible in examining who they are, what they are, what you're dealing with, and if you get a bad feeling about it, if your intuition warns you, you get out. What happens is with many people that get scammed, in general, is that they expect others to be transparent and loyal towards them. Now, it should be like that, that as a human species, we're loyal towards one another, but that's only possible when we serve the Heavenly Father. When people don't serve the Heavenly Father, their loyalty towards you is always based on self-interest. So their loyalty is unstable. So how can you, in this world, expect stable loyalty from others? You shouldn't, but that's what a lot of people do. And that's a fairy tale attitude a lot of people have. And because it's a fairy tale attitude, they walk into traps and bad situations easily. In Japan, they hold you as an individual accountable for not doing your due diligence. This is not to punish you, but this is to discipline you. That's how the judicial system or the justice system of Japan operates. You may even get a fine or may have to go to jail for a while if you were reckless in just getting yourself involved with someone. I don't say in the West they never address you as a victim for not doing your due diligence. But here the answer is more on the perpetrator. Now, should we blame the victim? No. Victim blaming, we don't do that over here as believers. Nevertheless, if we find out that the victim was careless, maybe careless is not the right word. If we find out that the victim was neglectful towards themselves, that means they were also neglectful towards other people. So if we find out that was neglect on the part of the victim, yes, the victim is the one that's victimized. So we have sympathy for for them in a sense that hey something bad happened to you they shouldn't done it to you that's true at the other hand we should also address the victim saying but hold on a minute if you felt that something was off why didn't you pull back from the situation why didn't you do that why did you keep yourself in a bad situation you should have realized it only turned out badly so yes you were the one that they did wrong to but you put yourself in a bad situation too so holding a victim accountable, if there is neglect on their part, is not blaming the victim. That's, that's just accountability. But there are times when you hold the victim accountable, they blame you as if you are a bigot, or especially when, it, when the victim is a female, they say, oh, oh, you're a misogynist. Especially in the West, though to the influence of feminism, if you criticize a female victim rightfully, if you rightfully criticize a female victim because it was neglect on her part, you are called a misogynist. No, that's just being, being realistic. So just understand, in this world, and it does only relate to the West and feminism, in the world often, you're not allowed to be realistic because people don't want to hear it. Just understand, without due diligence, Without this realistic attitude, you will get yourself in trouble as well as those around you. Without due diligence, you might even get yourself and others killed.
For example, if you meet someone on a dating app, by the way, I don't recommend that. But anyway, let's say you meet someone on a dating app. You meet them. You begin a sexual relationship with them. And you never take those diligence straight out what is you're dealing with, what if this individual ends up being a, a narcissistic psychopath. And now, because you broke up with him, he's stalking you, he's stalking your relatives, he's, a, he's a bothering people at your workplace, even threatening people at work. So now, you endanger both yourself and those around you by not, by not exercising due diligence about the guy you wanted to be sexually involved with. It works all the way around too. You, you encounter this woman, you think, oh, she's fine, she's good. You don't do due diligence and let you find out that she was a time bomb filled with anxiety with a lot of daddy issues. And now you have children with her and now your children have, has to experience this painful divorce and the mother who's using them as a pawn against you. You didn't exercise due diligence, so you got yourself in trouble. And now you also, your children also are in trouble. Look, people that lack due diligence should be disciplined by the community so that the community as well as individual him or herself remains safe and sane. What happens in the world often is that unfortunately the individuals lack due diligence are not disciplined. So what happens is that those people become portals for demons to use. Oh, and the saddest part is a lot of people don't even want to face that they have self-neglect and that they are dysfunctional. So eventually they become reprobates because they become willing agents of demons. But whether someone is a willing agent of demons or someone is not even aware they have self-neglect, if they lack due diligence, they lack due diligence. And due diligence has nothing to do with intelligence. You can have a very low IQ and still pay attention to your intuition and avoid bad situations. And you have people with a high IQ, with high intelligence, and they often fall for the worst case scenarios. So, though diligence is an attitude that we all should have. When someone lacks though diligence, I recommend you not to be involved with that individual. If you have to be involved because they are your employer or a colleague or they may be a close relative or someone in the neighborhood you often see, then you deal with them on a practical level but no long-term involvement. Again, people that continuously lack due diligence. I'm not talking about people who get shocked or who are confronted and they face themselves and now they're in therapy. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who are in continuous. Those are, those are in continuous lack of due diligence. Such people will get you and others either in trouble, trouble or killed or both. So, have due diligence when it comes to your social relationships. Have due diligence when it comes to your business relationships. Have due diligence in general. We are commanded to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. We're not told to be stubborn as donkeys. Unfortunately, a lot of people are like that, including believers. Well, that's it for now. Keep on agreement with Christ and be at peace.